It's really cool. I, I love it. I appreciate you doing this too. This is awesome. Oh, you're helping me out too. So yeah, I mean, but <laughs> yeah, you, you're you're, uh, you're taking me to the deep. Okay. Okay. So you know, I, like I, went, to, I went to the deep um, went scuba diving one time, first time ever. Okay. And then under there, it was like it's like a whole new world. I know. But once you get there, yeah, it's like the 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 schools of fish, the dolphins, they just come by and they just kind of welcome you into their world. Yeah, and yeah, you yeah, become yeah. A part of it, and you I forget gotcha. you're not a fish. You forget right, 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 right. Yeah. But then you don't know how to do. You don't know. You don't know how to do. That's it. That's <laughs> it. So this is stretching me. I love it. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. Um. Hopefully that you'll you'll be able to to see us, and hopefully you, that you had no problem getting here. I am here with um, a business partner of mine, and we are talking about the technology that helps us with quantum living. Because as those of you who know me and who work with me know, I talk about quantum energy and how to find alternatives or energetic alternatives to taking pharmaceuticals. So. That's been my passion since I lost my mother and my two sisters and my dad, and all of them were under care of a doctor. So my my passion and my mission has been, um, how can I help you, me, live a life working with our energy? Because it's all about energy. Mm -hmm. And working with um, Dr. Pastor Peterson, he's gonna introduce himself here shortly, but working with Pastor Peterson, we're working with a technology called Active Pure. And Active Pure is something that's really, really important for this time, particular time in our life. And um, we're just gonna talk and share some information with you. You are able to send some um, questions in the chat, so please feel free to share the questions in the chat and ask any questions that you have, and we'll just share what we have. Um, so welcome. Um, Reverend Peterson, good to have you. Oh, likewise. I appreciate you, Dr. Orr, for inviting me. I'm excited. Um, this is such uh, an amazing time. Um, I know that we are, are in unprecedented times, mm. but the beauty is, is that we have a fantastic solution. Yes. Um, God never allows any problem without there being a solution. And, and here's what I tell people. Okay. Money is not a miracle. Hmm. We shouldn't pray for it. Money is a reward for a problem solved. Oh, that's interesting. And so we have a major problem, but the beauty is, is we have a fantastic solution. So it's an opportunity for large sums of revenue to transfer hands. Yeah. So we're in one of the greatest times that we've, ever seen before okay. and i'm excited about it yeah it is exciting now you you've opened up some some um potential pandora boxes there so we'll get talk about those too because you're um you know you're a minister and you, you work with people and you're talking about money not being a miracle and you're talking about it's okay to make money and you're talking about that um there it's okay for you to generate money so talk a little bit about that well the thing about it is there's there's every person has two purposes. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. The the number one, there's a there's a what I call a general or a universal purpose, which is to glorify God. Hmm. That's everyone's general purpose. In other words, the glory of God is the reputation of God. Hmm. That's his glory, is his reputation. So, so he wants us to reflect his reputation. So in him, there is no lack. There is no sickness. There is no depression. There is none of that. So when we say that we are his, we are his highest form of creation. Yes. So why are we living in lack? Why are we living in sickness? Why are we accepting that as our norm? Right. So a general purpose is to glorify him, is to show forth his reputation. Then within that, everyone has a specific purpose, and that is to glorify him within your unique difference. Hmm. I can't be Dr. Orr and Dr. Orr can't be me, but I need Dr. Orr and Dr. Orr needs me. Hmm. See, he created us to be different, but not isolated. Ah, okay. see, so I can be different, 
but not isolated. My difference adds to you and your difference adds to me. And as long as we see each other as God's highest form of creation, we can work together to produce more. Wow, that's phenomenal. Come on. That's so phenomenal. And I tell you, um, it's it's so different now than when I was younger and in church and my dad's a Baptist minister. So it's okay. so different now the way that um, just the times and the changing of the times has forced people to have to look at scripture and look at and take those truths and bring those truths and make them applicable to the situations that are happening today. That's it. And I think when we don't do that, then we do ourselves and we do our, our followers and anybody listening a disservice. A major disservice. And 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 I think you're you hit the nail on the head because a lot of us really don't understand um, the psychology mm. behind the word of God. And here's what I mean by that. Uh, the Bible says, uh, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he, right? We use that scripture all the time, but what we fail to understand is what is the heart? See, we think heart and we think the beating muscle in our chest, but the Greeks refer to the heart as the subconscious mind. So what a man thinks mm -hmm. is subconscious, so he becomes. Wow. Because the subconscious is your habitual living. Yeah. See, when you first started to drive, you didn't, you, you got in the car, you put your hands at 10 and 2, you put your seatbelt on, you put the key in the ignition, you, you checked everything. Because you were driving from your conscious mind. Hmm. But as you drove for a year, you never thought about putting seatbelts on and holding 10 and 2. Now you can drive down the highway and put your lipstick on while you're eating a sandwich and holding the steering wheel with your knee. Why? How do you know? How do you yeah. know? No, I'm because you're driving from your subconscious. Yeah. Okay. It's the habitual living. So as a man thinks in his subconscious, there goes his life. So when we read scripture, we're reading it at such a surface level that we think the beating heart. Well, if that be the case of how we approach scripture, we say, as a man thinketh in his heart. Well, we don't even know how to change that heart then. If we're dealing with the beating muscle, we don't know how to change it to produce something different. But if you look at it from the understanding that it's talking about the subconscious mind, you can change the subconscious hmm. by what you feed the conscious mind. There you go. You understand what I'm saying? But I if you that. read the scripture incorrectly, see, watch this. The Bible says, God, he says, man looks at the outward of another man, mm -hmm. but God looks at the heart. What? God is looking at the subconscious yeah. to see what's in your subconscious. He says this. You honor me with your mouth, but your heart is far from me. Wow. Your subconscious mind is far from me because you haven't studied enough of the regular Bible every day to get it into your subconscious. All so right. your heart is far from me. So I didn't come to preach to you, but hey, I just got to do it. I am who I am. Hey, you know what? We're going to ask the choir to give us something now. Come on now. <laughs> Yeah, um, I tell you, and you, you're, you're, you're speaking to the choir because um, I had to back away from the church just because they it just seemed to not grow up. You know, it just seemed to not change with the time. And and I started studying when, when my mother passed, I started studying the subconscious mind. Mm. Now, I don't know why I started studying. It was just that that's what felt good. And I vowed after going through that experience is that's why I would spend my, spend my life as to where I was guided. Mm -hmm. So I was guided there. I started studying, got, um, went through, went through, went through so many trainings of just the subconscious mind. And that's how I understood how my mother chose to make the choices that she made and even the ones to cross over. Okay. So if I, and having that was so much closure. It was so much peace. It was like, you know, um, I don't have to, you know, grieve her anymore because I know she's always here. Right. So it was just so it was such a, an epiphany for me to to study the subconscious mind and understand that the only reason we get these blocks and we don't can't move forward is because of the programs that we haven't learned to turn off that are running in our subconscious. 
limiting beliefs, yes. doubts, and fears. Yeah, awesome. That's well, it. We're, yeah, we're going to have a good time here because we're talking about ways in which we can further help ourselves um, with the things that are going on today with, um, you know, the, the sicknesses, the, the, you know, just the, I don't even know if we can say the word pandemic, but with that thing going on that, um, you know, we're in a situation that where we have to find solutions mm -hmm. because the solutions, the solutions that are being presented to us are solutions that were harmless. Mm -hmm. um, and so we have to be creative and not be forced into a, um, a victim box exactly. so that we're not, we don't become the victims. Exactly. And so one of those technologies that I've looked at and I have come to just absolutely love is the Valera, um, well, we call it the Active Pure. Mm -hmm. So if you would like to tell us a little bit about that, that'd be great. Um, well, it was, it was created back in the early 90s mm -hmm. with the collaboration of NASA and the University of Wisconsin. Okay. Um, they're actually, it's called the uh, Wisconsin Center for Space Automation and Robotics. They created this technology for NASA because NASA had a challenge. Mm -hmm. When they were putting the International Space Stations uh, in the air, they were trying to grow green plants on the space station. But plants naturally release what's called ethylene gas. Well, inside of an enclosed environment, the plants were releasing ethylene gas and the ethylene gas was causing the plants to die mm. quickly, okay? And so uh, NASA challenged Wisconsin's uh, developmental department to come up with a technology that could kind of uh, combat the overabundance of ethylene gas. And mm -hmm. when they develop this technology, and actually the technology is 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 known um, as radiant catalytic ionization. That's the actual technology name. So once they created this, they realized that not only did it decrease the amounts of the ethylene gas, but it also decreased the levels of bacteria in the air, fungus mm -hmm. in the air, um, airborne pathogens in the air. So they begin to use, utilize this technology to keep the entire interior space of the space station clean. Here's why. When, when, when they're in space, when the astronauts are on the space center, they're in space. They can't just open a window and let fresh air in. One sneeze, one sneeze by an astronaut would contaminate the entire space station. Wow. Because once you put the viruses and the bacteria in the atmosphere, all they do is multiply. They just keep multiplying. They just keep multiplying. So one sneeze would contaminate the entire space station. So they created this technology to initially handle the abundance of ethylene gas, but then begin to realize it did so much more. And so in the mid nineties, they then bring it back down to earth. The technology was purchased by a company that eventually got bought out by Ares, who's our parent company. Okay. They took the technology and began to use it for household and business usage. So it was initially created for space, but then we brought it down to earth. So <laughs> think about how powerful that is. Yeah. If you have a technology that NASA, NASA, has approved. This technology has been one of 75 uh, technologies that have been inducted into the space, uh, 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 what is it called? It's, it's, let me get it right. Hall of Fame. The, hall, the Space Technology Hall of Fame by the Space Foundation. Now that's so huge because it's only one of 75 products. Hmm. 75 technologies over the last 30 years, Dr. Orr, wow. that's been inducted into the Space Technology Hall of Fame. Have you ever heard of GPS? Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of the cochlear implant? Yes. Those are Space Technology Hall of Fames. Wow. They've been inducted. Uh, LASIK eye surgery? Mm -hmm. 
Hall of Fame inductee. Wow. Uh, satellite radio technology. That's another one. And it's funny. Those are things we can't even think about living without. I mean, if we lived without a GPS, I mean, we can't think about. I don't remember life without GPS. There you go. What were we doing before GPS? We were having to play navigators. We had yeah. a big map in our lap. Yeah. Missing exits. <laughs> Come on now. You know, men, men, men were forced. Men were forced to be stubborn. I got yeah. it. Just, 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 I got it. No. Now we have technology that's telling us, get off here, get off there in one mile, turn right. Mm -hmm. Those are, those have been inducted into the Space Technology Hall of Fame. Wow. But my point is, the reason they have been inducted is because they have impacted humanity at such a high level. Mm. But these are space technologies. Ours is one of those. All right. So how does how does someone like the everyday Joe Blow, how does the everyday Joe Blow, I mean, I know people like me and you are the ones that tell them about it, but how do they actually, you know, get a chance to experience something like this? Because so many times, you know, we wait until we have a wake up call and then we're trying to, you know, run and try to find in a panic, trying to find things that are going to address the problem instead of being proactive and finding things that are going to address the problem first. So how does everyday Joe Blow, you know, get involved in the technology? By finding people like you and me. And, 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 and what I mean by that is people who have not drank the Kool-Aid in the sense that, yes, the virus is real. I'm not minimizing the validity of the virus, mm -hmm. but you also have to look at the impetus behind those who are pushing it. It's a money grab. Okay. It's a money grab for everybody in the sense that you have those who will create it in a lab, manipulate it, and then sell you the virus or, or, the, or the vaccine on the back end. Yeah. Yeah. Or even the test, you know, even all of that, all yeah. of that. Yeah. So so now now. But but am I dismissing the validity of the virus itself? No, mm -hmm. no, no, no. Right. But I don't function from fear. And so we do have to understand preventative, preventative. So I read an article the other day and it said 50 percent of all I'm going to capitalize A-L-L. -L. All sicknesses stem from a bad indoor air quality. Wow. So now watch this. So they're telling us to quarantine for 14 days. Where? In your house. Where is there poor air quality? In your house. Where do most... So now watch this. If, if, you're, if you're positively tested for COVID... Mm -hmm. And you're coughing, sniffing, sneezing. What are you doing? You're putting all of that virus out into the atmosphere. And all it's doing is multiplying. And you're told to quarantine in that for 14 days. Wow. So are you really getting better when you're breathing inadequate air? So people like you and I who understand the science behind what we're promoting if they get in touch with people like us, it's like, hey, 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 I understand it's real, but we have a solution. Okay. Put this, put this technology in your home. And what happens is this, uh, what we call the air and surface pro has active pure technology. And what active pure does is it takes the oxygen and the moisture out of the air brings it through our proprietary technology mm -hmm. of a honeycomb technology made of rare earth and metals. And it funnels it through um, and, and it literally converts it to what we call active pure molecules. And it then sends it out into the atmosphere as almost like virus assassins. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's seeking them out. Two things happen. First thing happens is it sends out uh, a, a radio frequency that's that we call negative and positive ionization. And what it's doing is 
A positive ion will hit a virus. A negative ion may hit a dust mite. Uh, a positive ion may hit, uh, you know, w whatever a different virus may be. And then a positive or negative ion is hitting something else. And what it does, Dr. Orr, when those positive and negative ionizations attract to something, they come together and the weight of it makes it fall to the ground wow. immediately. So as soon as it's traveling at 1200 feet per second. So immediately when you turn the unit on, it's immediately hitting the atmosphere and all viruses that are airborne. It's, it's hitting it with negative and positive ionization, which makes it come together. The weight of it makes it fall. Why is that important? Because we breathe in viruses. That's why they're telling you to stay six feet apart because the virus, when you sneeze or cough or talk, it can't travel further than six feet, hmm. but it's still airborne. Yeah. So in your house, all of the viruses are airborne. So what, what our technology does is it immediately attacks it with negative and positive ionization. It makes it come together and the weight of them fall to the ground now. So now you're not breathing it in because it's on the ground. Okay. Then it sends out the active pure molecules that also fall to the ground and attaches it in the air. So it's killing it in the air and on all surfaces. So wow. now you're breathing in clean, healthy, come on, rejuvenating air. All right. That sounds really good. I think I found, I think I found a way to do this video real quick. Sure. So let's see if we can get this, get this to play. Okay. And it's going to, it takes a minute. My computer's a little, a little bit slow. No, but that, explanation, that was a really good explanation. Well, um, I appreciate it. And let's see if we can get this to play here. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's still it's still loading here. But. Okay. Okay. Oh, nice. If it was, yeah, here we go. Because of COVID-19, the air we breathe and the thing no longer safe. Shared air and surfaces harbor risks due to COVID and other pathogens. But with active pure technology, air and surfaces can be purified and disinfected quickly and safely while you share and occupy spaces with others. Active Pure is a patented advanced active form of PCO technology. It works by creating and propelling safe and powerful disinfecting molecules into the air in a room, which quickly seek and destroy pathogens everywhere. Active Pure molecules work by piercing the shell of a virus or bacteria to destroy its living environment, thereby preventing it from replicating or doing harm. Active Pure technology is designed to use the law of gases to carry its safe disinfecting molecules into every nook and cranny in every shared space. The law of gases is the reason that the smell of microwaved popcorn immediately spreads through your entire home. These odorless and invisible active pure molecules fly through the air from our portable or installed active pure products, quickly and safely destroying pathogens in the air and on surfaces. Active pure is very different from other technologies that take a passive approach and require that the pathogen be pulled into an inefficient filter, UV light, or plain PCO mechanism. Active pure does not wait to see if by luck the pathogen is captured. It seeks and destroys them quickly, wherever they may be, in the air you breathe or on the surfaces you touch. Active Pure can deliver measurable and guaranteed results, giving you the peace of mind to know that you are providing the best protection for the people you care for. Available in over 70 products, both portable and installed, Active Pure technology is used in hospitals, state houses, and other shared facilities across the world. It is proven by science and validated by multiple third parties. Active Pure is the key technology in our FDA Class II medical device, the Aris Medical Guardian. 
Active Pure is not too good to be true. To learn how you can protect the people you care about, please visit ActivePure.com. There you go. Yeah, that was awesome. Okay. Well, um, and and that is is like a pretty cut and dried thing. I mean, it showed all of the places where it could be used, where you don't have to wipe down, where you don't have to use a lot of of chemicals that are going to be damaging to if it's in a, a day if it's in a daycare. Yes. It's going to be damaging to the children. If it's in a um, assisted living, it's not going to be damaging to the adults because some of them wear oxygen. Yeah. Um, so you don't have to worry about the the high chemicals and the the toxins that are in the air because they're just as harmful too. Yeah. Yeah. We were we were talking the other day and and uh, one of the things that I understand is that bleach for example is one of the most toxic most toxic carcinogens yes that people don't talk about uh-huh. you know it's been it's been associated to breast cancer in men yeah. because we wash our t-shirts with it and then put it on our skin particularly men because we wear mostly white t-shirts mm-hmm. and so uh but anyway it's been related to to breast cancer in men. So when when daycare centers and everyone's using bleach now. Yep. And Lysol. And Lysol. Yep. Which those are those are carcinogens. And so and in addition, you mentioned it the other day. You said one of the additional risks is that when you have a daycare, you can't determine where all of those little hands have touched. Yeah. So you can't even effectively wipe down every nook and cranny of the place oh. where our technology sends out what I call virus assassins. And they're created to seek out virus, yeah. to seek out mold, fungus, bacteria, anything airborne and on surfaces. Our technology is designed to seek it out. I was listening to that and I wrote down, you know, as we talk about little little 30 second commercial. What's your 30 second, you know, elevator pitch. When people ask you, what do you do? I was thinking about that at the gym this morning because there's everybody at the gym, you know? And it's like, if someone asked me, what do you do? I was trying to think about my, my, you know, my 30 second, what do I do? Okay. And I wrote down right here, right as that was playing, okay. I'm a virus assassin. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. So, so when someone asks you, what do you do? I'm a virus assassin. What the heck is that? It gives me the opportunity to tell them what I do. Nice. Yeah. Everyone's a doctor. I'm a lawyer. I'm, oh, okay, good. Now I'm a virus assassin. Mm. Oh my God. Tell me more. What's a virus assassin? I'm glad you asked. Ah, yeah. Nice. So anyway, yeah. I was just writing that as I was watching that video. Yeah. And that's being creative and it's, it's, it's um, one of those things that make people think about it because because they you don't hear that every day. Yeah, you don't hear that every day, and then the thing that surrounds us that that's been our attention is constantly being drawn to us is that you know we'll let, how do we kill this virus? How do we kill this virus? That's so, it. Yeah, that's it. and that's what we're doing. It's like when someone I was fortunate enough, I was blessed to sell thirty units to an assisted living facility. Well. Mm-hmm. He said, we had an outbreak. We have an outbreak in our facility. He said, I don't want you to come here, but I need the solution. Okay. So what is that? When someone needs something killed, (laughs) who are they calling? An assassin. (laughs) Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. So, So, so um, yeah. So NASA, the, the fact that this company could take this technology and pull it in and you know, make it available to 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 the everyday Joe for every. I mean, we there they have units for their car, their, oh, their personal units. Yeah, so some of the, the some of the the different ways in which they have actually taken this technology and put it in a form that everybody could take advantage of it. Listen, there's there's what's called the uh, fresh air mobile, like you just mentioned. Uh, for as little as two hundred dollars, you can put one in your car. So if you have people that are driving Uber, taxis, Lyft drivers, um, or if you're just driving family around, 
Mm-hmm. And you don't know where that family member's been over the last two, three weeks. You don't know. You're just picking them up to take them somewhere. And because it's family, you trust them. Right. But put the unit in your car and the same technology is working to create clean air inside of your intimate space of your vehicle. Mm-hmm. We have a fresh air personal. I don't have mine, but uh, when I go to the gym, I have it around my neck. Yeah. Um, and it and it kills uh, contaminants around your personal space. So uh-huh. really, uh, I tell people I really don't have to wear a mask. Um, it, it's going to kill the contaminants all around my face. So as I'm talking, it's killing the contaminants coming out and it's killing contaminants attempting to make their way in. Mm-hmm. So we have the, the personal uh, fresh air devices um, that are 130 bucks. Wow. 130 bucks and you can wear one around your neck to always keep fresh air breathing uh, into your, your nostril passages and breathing into your bronchial tubes. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a no brainer. Yeah. Your every um, server in restaurants needs to have one on. Everybody. Every hairstylist, every barber, because we're you know in close proximity. I mean, it's like, yeah. you think about that. It's like, wow. Put a unit in your in your business and then put the personal around your neck and you're good. You're good. You don't have to walk in fear. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so uh, we have another we have another technology that not many people are talking about, Dr. Mm-hmm. Orr, but we have a laundry application of this. We have a unit that you attach to your um, your your washing machine. And it eliminates the need for you to ever use laundry. And again, laundry products have carcinogens. And they're harmful to the environment, harmful to the water supply. Our technology is using the same active pure technology to get clothes whiter than bleach ever would. Mm -hmm. And it's safer. So now why is this so important? Let's talk to the hotel chains. Let's talk to the hospitals that are washing linens every single day. How much are they spending in laundry products on a daily, weekly, monthly, annually basis? So if you could tell them, sell them one or two or say 10 units to attach to every one of their washing machines, that's a one-time outlay. The machines are good for about three years. So for a $10,000, $15,000 investment, they now don't buy laundry for three years. Yeah, yeah, that's something. That's huge. That's very huge. Very that's huge. huge. Yeah, because then you think too, they're taking away those carcinogens, the bleach. The- that, that customers are sleeping on every night. So mm-hmm. now they're able to put little tents into their rooms that say, hey, your linens have been washed with this proprietary active pure technology that uses no laundry detergents whatsoever. Exactly. So sleep well. Exactly. And so we also have another um, um, document that says that the most unsanitary thing in a hotel room is the remote control. Yeah. Scary. Yeah. Yeah. And bringing that, bringing that, just that unit. Uh, we've got one of our upline, he travels with his unit. So when he goes into a hotel, he just brings it in, sets it up, leaves, go has, go has dinner comes back in this room and sanitizes. Like, I know it. I, yeah. I thought about that. Um, I'm I'm just a, I like to travel light. Uh, as a matter of fact, my wife and I are looking to get our second home in Palm Springs, California, because okay. we go there every year. And one of the reasons is my wife doesn't like hotels for that yeah. reason. She's like, I don't know who's been here and I don't know what they've done. Yeah. And so she cannot, she doesn't sleep well when we travel. So she's like, I want my own house. And then for me, I don't like carrying luggage because for the men, we're normally the mules. So I just want to I just want to enjoy the the journey. I don't want all the luggage. I don't want to feel like a mule. I'm like, listen. So anyway, so I but I heard him say he takes his with him. Mm -hmm. I'm like, man, I could imagine because the technology works within 30 minutes. The room is clean. And literally, we did a new study. And it says that it killed 99.999% of all the cold two and SARS, which is what's responsible for COVID, killed mm-hmm. it in three minutes, Dr. Orr. Wow. Kills it in three minutes. 
So yeah. now he really doesn't even have to wait 30 minutes. He can go in there and within three minutes, it's killing it. Within 30, it's killing it on surfaces. Mm -hmm. Now, now that's a, and that's a really good point because we're talking about surfaces and we're talking about being in a car. And we have one of the questions says that uh, one of the customers bought one and it made her cough and made her dizzy and gave her itchy throat. But for me, that just says that, you know, you've got to get used to the clean air one. And then the, um, you know, check to see if it's an ion button on that, because mm -hmm. sometimes that ion, you know, you put it in with that ion filter in there. It's going to clean that air really, really fast. Yeah. But it's not designed for you to breathe it all the time. Yeah. So you may need to put it in, turn that off, turn it on, and then turn it off. Yeah. With that filter. Because yeah. that will cause you to have dizziness and uh, itchy yeah. um, because you're not used to breathing that clean air. I know when I got, when I first set mine up, it was just like, it was almost cold in the room because it seemed like it removed all the dust. It did. My, my you know what? The first yeah. week I kept telling my wife, man, it feels cold in here. Like, so we kept playing with the heat and I'm yeah. like, what is it? Um, but then it's also a fan blowing in it too. To mm -hmm. blow out the uh, molecules. Okay. But what what I noticed is uh, when I first hooked mine up, my my nose had a slight burn because yeah. you're breathing in those molecules that are killing those viruses and all the airborne pathogens. Yeah. So I told my wife, I said, I know that we don't say uh, if someone is 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 COVID positive. You know, we never say it cures it, right? But I told my wife, I said, between me and her, I said, listen, if any of us ever tested positive, what I'm going to do or what I would do is I would go in the bedroom, quarantine in the bedroom, bring the unit in the room, close the door, give me two days, and I guarantee you, you'll get back up after two days. Yeah. Because yeah. you're breathing in those molecules that are killing and attacking viruses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I you, did. you can't help but get better. Absolutely, I delivered one to someone who actually had had it, and um, then um, but she called me back that night and talked about how it was just making a big difference in the way that she breathed yeah. and the way that she was able to loosen up all of that stuff really quickly. So yeah. that air, you know, we take air because we use it all the time. We take it for granted. Yeah. And we don't know when the quality of it changes. And we don't know how much of the quality changes yeah. until we fix it. Well, and you know, one of the things it's like back in the 70s, and, and the company kind of talks about this, but back in the 70s during the oil embargo, when gas went up to 50 cents a gallon, imagine that, um, <laughs> people started really figuring ways to conserve energy. Uh -huh. and, and so um, it's like they, they begin to suggest to homeowners to get better windows, uh, central heating and air, so that you could do the, the air transfer, bring fresh air in, take bad air out. Mm -hmm. That's, that was the solution, so to speak. But what I'm getting to is people to conserve energy started getting better quality insulation in homes better quality windows in homes, better quality doors and garages to keep uh, homes efficiently operating. Well, what that created was a breeding ground for bacteria, fungus, molds, and airborne pathogens. Mm -hmm. So we created sick homes. Mm, yeah. What we were trying to do was create safe and efficient homes, but we created sick homes because now bacteria, mold, funguses and all that's not getting out. And when I was growing up, we didn't have central air. So doors were always open. Windows were always open. So fresh air was coming in. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. you don't see windows open anymore. Right, right. No. Everything's yeah. tightly secured, and yeah. so it's breeding grounds. Yeah, I remember my granddad used to say um, he thought it was really strange that we, when bottled water, we started selling bottled water. He said, "Can you imagine that? Why would I buy water when I can get water out my spot, out my spigot?" Yeah. And, and you know, as you, the time went on, you thought, "Well, Grandpa was right. We are buying water." 
And now, you know, and I remember him saying back then that we're going to be buying air. We're going to be buying, there's going to come a time when we're going to be buying water and we're mm. going to be buying air. Wow. And so wow. now we're selling air. We're selling clean wow. air. We literally are. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and, and if you think about it, uh, when there is a perceived shutdown of the market coming, Mm -hmm. everybody rushes to the groceries and what is their shortage of water? Yeah. But I said to my wife, I said, we got a filter on our faucet. So don't run out and buy 10 things of a bottle of water when we got water right here in our faucet. Yeah. It's like, it's come on now. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I read a, I read a, um, I, I read an article, not an article, it was a book. And it said that, 2% of the population thinks. 3% hmm. of the population thinks that they think. 95% hmm. of the population would rather die than think. Wow. Wow. That's scary. That's yeah. scary. But it's true. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's why it's scary because it is true. When you think it, about people who don't venture beyond what they know, or beyond what they hear every day to find out new information, especially when they repeat it over and over and over again, you need some new information in order to be able to come up with some new solutions. So if you're never getting new information, you're never gonna be able to come up with new solutions. That's why I, I tell people in our ministry, show me your five friends and I'll show you your future. Mm -hmm. Exactly right, exactly right. I me, go ahead. Yeah. Show me your show me your five friends and I'll show you your future. Yeah, you're not venturing out. So so for me, um, being a part of Valara has been uh, very, very enlightening because I get to meet people like you. See, I, I get to meet people smarter than me because you learn yeah. by people's differences. But you don't want to just be around anybody. You want to be around people who are improving themselves so that they have something to help you improve. Exactly. And so this has been just, and, and the thing about it is we met each other probably three weeks ago, yeah. four weeks ago. Yeah. But here we are collaborating, talking, getting to know each other and, and, yeah. and, and being attracted to each other because of our like-mindedness. Exactly. Exactly right. Yeah. Exactly right. And it's a beautiful it's a beautiful thing just to be able to know, you know, when you decide make that decision to step outside that box, you don't have to worry about being alone. Because as soon as you step out there, there's gonna be somebody that's gonna be attracted to your energy. You yeah. know, when you got that pure heart, you got yeah. that pure intention, that's somebody's it. gonna be attracted to it. That's it. Yeah. So yeah. I put your information, I put your um your website down at the bottom so people okay. can see it, but tell us. Tell us how people who want to get in touch with you when they watch this, how can they get in touch with you? They can call me directly. Okay. Uh, I answer my phone. My wife says that I'm nosy, but I'm really not. I just believe why do we have all these devices if we can't connect? Okay. Um, so 614-286-2372 is my phone number, or they can go as the website is scrolling across the bottom. It's valara.com forward slash calibrate. Uh, calibrate is C A L I B R eight calibrate. Mm -hmm. uh, and so they can reach out either directly or through, uh, the email. I mean the, uh, website. website. Absolutely. Yeah. But better to just call me. Yeah. Call me directly. Yeah. That's, that's kind of old school, but that's, that's, that's the best way. That's the best way for me to, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying anything about old school. I'm just saying. Listen, um, I'm old school. I'm, I'm 50, I, I just turned 54. And, uh, and, 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 and I called, I called a person the other day, uh -huh. who's probably 58. Okay. I called and I didn't leave a voicemail cause I was going to call back. And the next day or two days later, yep. Monday, he, he texted me on Monday and said, I saw, I missed your call the other day. What's up? What did you need? Yeah. And I said, yeah. This is what we've come to. Yeah. I called you. I didn't text you. Yeah. I called you. So call me back. See, I, I so what that says to me is I don't, I don't, 
I don't measure up enough for you to call me back. You text me back and said, I saw I missed your call. It took more time for you to text all of that than to, than to hit a dial. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. That's where we've come as a society, though. But anyway, I didn't. We, we, I digressed. You know what I mean? So I'm saying, people, call me. 614-286-2372. And people say, man, you don't want to put your number out there. Why? If I don't want to talk, I can block them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if they come, if they come sideways, you can block the numbers. Yeah. But be I'm in business. Yeah. I'm in business. And so, people appreciate getting somebody at the end of the phone because we get so many machines or get so right. many, you know, so many bots. That's so it. They really do appreciate getting somebody at the at the other end of the phone. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. But this has been a really ple fun, pleasing pleasure, Pastor Mike, to talk with you. Um, so if you were going to leave um, our audience, just leave us with something that can be thought provoking, that could be something to really help us um, be more cognizant about the, the inside air that's in our house, in our car, at work. Um, then and just about our, our air quality and just about our health, mm -hmm. what, would, what would that thing be? Well, what I, I think what I would say is um, there's a company here in Columbus called Battelle. Uh, mm -hmm. Battelle is a big research and, and development company. And they had 10 trends of, uh, of, of, of what was important to homeowners. Okay. And one of the number one trends was 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 clean air mm -hmm. okay um and so why am i saying that the trend was 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 projecting from 2018 on it's not going away wow so we are in you and i mm -hmm. we are in the best position that you've ever been in because over the next five years, 10 years, 20 years, you're going to be, if not a DECA millionaire, you'll be a billionaire. Because that's where the opportunities are. Yeah. There was a study done and 61% of customer surveyed said the number one driver of company patronage used to be price. Mm. But now the number one driver is cleanliness. Yeah. If a business is not taking steps to keep the facility clean, because see, people have been conditioned mentally to look out for germs and viruses, and that's the wave. And guess what? Somebody's going to make money on this. Exactly. Why not you? Yeah. And why not our viewers? Yeah. I was, I have a business partner in Cincinnati and I'll say this and I'll let you go. I know you're busy, but he said this, he read an article that said by 2053, the African-American community, the wealth that we contain is going to be negative. Oh, wow. Why? Because we don't produce anything. Hmm. We consume everybody else's goods. We're not producing anything. So this gives us the ability to at least get into the middle of the production and the distribution. We can become distributors of something that is meeting an enormous need so that we can create wealth for ourselves and our children's children that's what i would leave with our audience and that's 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 a big one get in the game yeah get in the game learn what we need to learn stop yeah. telling me oh well my uncle said that's not gonna work well how many millions are your uncle overseeing yeah. what what is what is the legacy that your uncle's leaving you is he leaving you wealth to pass to your children's children then if he's not, then why are you listening to what uncle's talking about? Learn from the experts. Learn from those who are doing it. Learn from those who are making it happen. Learn from those who are creating wealth so that we can leave wealth to our children's children. 
-hmm. I don't want my daughter working as hard as I did. Because the Bible says a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. That's my responsibility to make sure my grandchildren's children are taken care of. That we, we eventually live on 30, 40, 100 acres of land that we all have homes on. And when my children's children, children are living on that, you know, compound, mm -hmm. they're saying, oh man, that was great, great granddaddy's house up there. That's where they live. My great, great grandfather bought this land and it's our family estate. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, exactly. Let's get in the game. And I'm grateful for you, Dr. Orr. I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you so much for being a guest and just being such a powerful and profound um, you know, presenter. I mean, we really needed that. Just the information is, is phenomenal. So for those of you who are listening, I really hope that, um, yes, this is recorded. You'll be able to get it on um, YouTube. We're actually on YouTube. So you will be able to get that. I'll make sure that you get that link so that you can use it. And if you're in the business, use it to, you know, send to people who have the questions that we have addressed today. And then if you're not in the business and you're thinking about looking at the business, then contact Dr. Peterson, contact myself. We'll be happy to just take you through and um, share some information with you, just sharing yeah. information, um, yeah. let you make your decision. So thank you so much, um, Reverend Peterson. Thank you so much for being here. I'm My so pleasure. Happy. Anytime, Dr. Orr, anytime. Okay, well, uh, we'll, well, I'm sure we'll have you back with the response that we've had. Well, I'm sure we're going to have you back. So anytime, um, you just let me know. I'm okay. here. To, I'm here to serve. All right. Thank you so much. All and right. Have an awesome you. day. All right. You too. Have a great day. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you on the next time.